All right, so this is a story on how I met my childhood legend, Chris Brown. I talked about it already on Instagram. If you didn't see it, go follow me on IG, but I'm gonna get more in depth. So boom, pre-warning, there's a lot of name dropping in this video. Sweep up all the names at the end and give me a name drop counter. You gotta let me slide, it's important in the story. I'm in LA, it's Grammy week. I'm out there going to parties, going to the events. No, I was not nominated for a Grammy, not yet. But I had some connections, I had a PR team out there. So I'm out there with my homie, with my manager, and there's a couple other people that we know out there. I'm going to all different types of events, the Billboard New Nominees Awards. I went to some exclusive Billboard party where I met hella people. Armani White, Charlie Heat, CeeLo Green was like DJ, it was crazy. I went to SZA's after party, like the day of the Grammys, we went to SZA's after party. They were giving out free new balances. SZA didn't even show up, but there was hella people there. Kiki Palmer, Bia, French Montana, all the girls from the Zeus Network, Natalie, Natalie Nunn and all of them, they were there too. Storm Reed was there. Shout out my dog Rio. We ended up at the Spotify party, which was super exclusive to get into. It was at the Paramount Studios or the Universal Studios, one of them. Somehow he finessed it. We said we were in Offset's PR team. And they made a call, who made a call, they made a call, and we got in. Coco Jones was performing, Ice Spice was there, but I didn't see her, we left before Ice Spice was there, but to Chris Brown, okay. So I believe this is our second night there, the first full day. So we go to Tyler's birthday party after the Grammy new nominees dinner, which by the way, Roxy from 106 in Park said, I was a future of music. I met Halle Bailey, talked to her. She's such a nice lady. Uh, Paris Jackson was in there. The lady who's like the director of Shade Room was there. We met hella people. So Tyler's birthday party. We go into, it's almost like a hotel and it was on a rooftop of a hotel. The lobby was mad packed. And for these types of things, it's a guest list and it was long. I was sitting down, it got to a point where I was almost like, bro, we don't even need to stay here. Like, it's not that serious. It's not that deep. Like we could just go somewhere else. You feel me? I wasn't feeling it, but we got in, we go up there. And it's strange because you would think Tyla, who's like on the younger side, she's in her early twenties. It would be a lot of young people. It wasn't, this wasn't even really like a Tyla's birthday thing. It was more like a industry event, Grammy week type of thing. I saw Alonzo Ball in there, Lou Williams in there, Omarion in there, who we actually ended up standing with because my homie is Omarion's videographer. So we were over there chilling with them. He's a cool dude, everyone's cool. Tyler comes in, she goes to her booth on like one side of the place. Say they were on that side. Chris Brown ends up coming in. He's in a booth on the completely other side. You know that um, picture and video that circulated of them taking the picture together? That was there. And I'm pretty sure the photo, the main photo that keeps circulating, my manager was the one that took that photo. But it's funny to see how everyone was trying to paint this narrative of Tyla and Chris Brown and that they had something going on. And that was not it. Tyla literally came from her booth, walked across, talked with Chris Brown, for a couple minutes, took the picture and walked back and I didn't see them talk again. So usually around celebrities, I'm pretty chill. Like I'm not gonna do the most because you know, I'm in the entertainment space too. And I wanna be seen as a peer, not as like a goopy or a fan. Not that there's anything wrong with being a fan of somebody, it's just the position that I'm trying to be, I want them to see me as an equal. So I'll be chilling around celebrities. We ended up crossing paths with Chris's booth and my manager actually was the one that stopped and talked to him first. I don't know what they were talking about. And I was talking with his homie, I believe his name is Dancer Boy Smith, something along those lines, but I remember him, he's a really good dancer. And I was talking to him like, yo, you're da da da. He's like, yeah, I'm like, yo, you're fire. He's like, thank you. Then I went up to Chris, all I said was, bro, you're a legend. Hailed him up, he's like, appreciate it. That's it, left them alone. They're in the corner, they was rolling up something. Enjoyed the rest of the party, we was chilling. I thought we were going home, cause by this time, it's probably like 2.30, 3, 3.30 in the morning. It's pretty late, but one thing I learned about LA is they will, where are we going next? Where are we going next? Where are we going next? And I'm not used to that, especially like in Toronto. It's not really like that, cause places close dumb early. But we ended up at another after party at, I don't know the name of the place, but it looked like a bar. It basically looked like a bar. We got in there and it's packed, 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 packed. So we're moving and shaking through the place. I end up catching my little spot in the back right corner. And I so happen to end up standing beside Lou Williams. Six men like Lou Will, two girls, and they get along like I'm Lou Will, that Lou Will, who is a legend in his own right. Lou Williams is a hood legend. So I'm standing there chilling. We're taking a couple shots of uh, Casamigos and things of that nature. Not me and Lou Will, me and my friend. 
and my manager were drinking whatever. The drinks is flowing. Chris ends up coming in. There was a lot of people at that party too, but I don't remember exactly who was there. Chris ends up coming in. And at the same time, I see Alan Iverson across the room. Alan Iverson notices Lou Will across the room. He comes over to where we're standing. So now it's me, Lou Will, and Alan Iverson. Let me repeat that. Alan Iverson, AI. We talk about practice braids, number three, heh, heh, crossover. Like Alan Iverson was standing in front of me. And I'm like, yo, this is Alan Iverson. I low key should have eavesdropped on their conversation, but I wasn't trying to do that. I kind of was, they were on this side of me and I was standing like this. I didn't really want to do too much. You feel me? Chris notices Lou Will and Alan Iverson. Chris comes over, starts talking to Lou Williams. So now it's Lou Williams. Allen Iverson, Chris Brown, and me standing in a diamond formation. It's me, Lou Williams, Chris Brown, and Allen Iverson. That is a pairing that I never thought would come out of my mouth in my entire life. So by this time, the drinks have been drinking, you know, the bubbly's been bubbly in, the Casamigos has been me going. And in my head, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna ask for a picture. If I was like completely, like if I didn't like, have one sip of nothing, I probably wouldn't have asked him for anything. So I just tapped him. I was very respectful. I was like, hey bro, I don't wanna bother you, but do you mind taking a picture? If he said, nah, I'm just chilling, cool. I, I would have been completely fine with that. But I took that risk. I was like, hey bro, uh, I don't wanna bother you, but you mind taking this picture? He's like, yeah, let's do it. This is where the story gets funny because as you notice in the picture, to me at least, cause some people say otherwise, some people say it's a nice picture. I don't like how I look in this photo, okay? I feel like I look a little goofy. And even when I posted, a couple of people were like, yo, why do you look like that? Why are you smiling like that? Even though my friends are haters, but I know what they mean. Like, it's just like, I don't look like myself. And this is why, so pay attention, peep game and lock in. I gave my friend, my phone to take the pictures of us. Very important key fact that this is a very, very, very dimly lit place. He's taking pictures of me and Chris Brown. See breezy, wall to wall, popping, excuse me miss. He's clicking, I'm, I'm seeing him click, click, click. And I'm like, yo, big man, turn on the flash, I'm dark. Me and Chris start laughing. Gee, 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 gee. Chris Brown is a professional, let me tell you that. Because somewhere in the middle of us laughing, the flash flashed, he stopped laughing and posed for the picture. I'm still laughing in the picture. That's why I have such a big grin and like my cheeks are so bunched up. It's because I was laughing. I didn't get to pose. But of course, I didn't know that in the moment. So after Chris walked away and I got my phone from my friend and I looked, first of all, there was only two photos. You know, when you're taking photos of someone, especially in a situation like this, where it's like a once in a lifetime, you gotta take 7,000 photos, take up every megabyte of storage in my phone because I want a banger. But he explained it to me and I get it. You guys know how in low light, sometimes iPhones, when you take the picture, it'll do like that loading thing and it'll take mad long to actually take the picture. That was happening on his side, but on my side, I thought we were taking the pictures. So when I saw it only flash twice, I was like, hmm, that's weird. But I looked at my phone and I'm like, oh man, what am I gonna do? Because I can't go back to Chris Brown and be like, hey, um, Mr. Brown, excuse me, I'm sorry, but I don't really like the photos that we took. Can we take some more? What do I sound like? Like there's no way that I would ever do that. That sounds like, I sound like a woman. And my manager actually got a photo with him and her photo looks really nice. So I just had to hold it. And the thing is, I'm not gonna not post the one photo I have with Chris Brown. Like that, that's insane, that's crazy talk. Why would I do that? I would never do that. So, hey man, at the end of the day, the day gotta end. So I had to post a photo and I posted it on my story first, actually. I didn't even post it. I, I wanted to let it marinate for a little bit to let people know, yeah, this is, this is just what I be on. You know, something like, I'ma just throw it on a story. So I threw it on a story and my phone blew up. 
beep, 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 beep. Tell Chris Brown about me. Is that Chris Brown? No way you meant Breezy. Oh my God, that's Chris Brown? Tell Chris Brown about me. First of all, to all of my homegirls, and even the girls that are my homegirls that message me, I'm not telling Chris Brown about nothing. Okay, so that's why I look like that in the photo. And it's funny because if the photo was just a regular good photo, I wouldn't have a funny story to tell about it. But I came out with a story. And honestly, that trip was really good, even though it rained like six days straight. I didn't go to LA to be in a tropical storm. I don't understand what the weather machine had going on with it, but it was raining and pouring for like five days straight. People are hiding under stores fronts to try to escape the rain. LA is not built for the rain at all. It was mad sewers getting clogged. Target was leaking. They had like catheter bags hooked up to the ceiling. You guys are a billion dollar corporation. Why do you have bags on your ceiling that go down through a hose into regular plastic bins? The that made no sense to me. So hopefully when I go back again, if this comes out before I leave, that it doesn't rain. And honestly, my childhood self would be proud. I'm doing a lot of things that I wanted to do for a very long time. And I'm meeting a lot of people that I looked up to that I admired for basically my whole life. And a lot of them know who I am. And even people that I didn't expect to know who I am, know who I am. Jabari that plays Will on the new Fresh Prince. I met him the last time and we connected, but like, We've never spoke. He follows me on Instagram. We follow each other, but we've never spoke. And I saw him at the Spotify party and he's like, yo, you've been going crazy on your skits, bro. Salute. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even know you were watching because you don't like or comment nothing. And I've DM'd him a couple times and he didn't answer. But hey, man, I, nobody owes you their time. So it's all good. But I was just surprised that he knew who I was, you feel me? But another thing that this trip taught me is the importance of being in the room. Like when you're not in a major city like LA or New York or something, it's easy to get stuck in just your hometown mentality or just stuck in a box to where if you create content online, it's easy to just be the online person. You really do have to get out and get in the rooms and get social so people know you. There's always something that I notice is there's always a vibe change between say if you know someone online and then you actually meet them in person the vibe changes fellas you know if you talk to a girl on Instagram whatever whatever she could be showing you some energy but when you finally meet her in person instantly it changes suddenly she got more time suddenly she answers quick enough because she sees that you're cute in person now this applies in business as well to where a lot of people in business especially the entertainment business are weird let's just say that a lot of people are weird so i don't blame people for being kind of hesitant or kind of guarded when you meet someone online and then when you meet in person and you realize that, oh, this guy is cool. Then now we could really start to, you know, parlay and do some business. I met a lot of producers that work with a lot of big, big name artists. So fingers crossed, I can get something moving with that as well. Cause y'all know I'm on my songwriting tip this year. I want to get a major placement this year. That's one of my goals for 2024. I want to get a major songwriting placement. And I've been doing some writing, but nothing has landed yet. And I don't really want to talk about anything unless something actually happens. So we'll see. But comment down below any other stories you want me to tell or any videos you want me to do because I really want to get back on this YouTube grind heavy. Short form content, they've been doing a bunch of foolishness with TikTok and Instagram and I really don't know YouTube. This is why YouTube is undefeated, man. But I just, I haven't cracked the code for YouTube. Like, what do y'all want? I don't know what to do, but I'm gonna try. I promise you I'm gonna try. Comment down below any videos you want me to do. Stay safe, stay faithful, I'm out.